So this is kind of where we're at. Um, tons and tons of plants out here. Got them on pallets. So this is the war on slugs and, and uh, gosh, let me see. I got, got a couple hundred uh, tomatoes in the ground, have a couple hundred peppers in the ground and about seven different garden plots and that one terrace system and plant it variously in various places around the house. But anyway, still what we have to go in the ground, and that, that probably what we have in the ground might be 20% of what we have. And all of this we got here. These guys roughly represent, I guess, just another another percentage. So I mean, I made definitely made a lot of progress, made lots and lots of progress. But uh, these are the guys that are lined up to go in here, and then. Uh, uh, on the other side, I've got, gosh, I probably have three times uh, what I'm showing here that's got to go in the ground. So that's going to be a lot of fun planting, but uh, way behind the season. Uh, there's an aquatic garden over there I'm working on. That's uh, for the koi pond and um, some business stuff I'm doing. I'll explain that to you guys later. But anyway, got to get all this stuff in the ground. Plant it really, 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 really late. And... Um, when I'm selling seedlings, a lot of people ask the question, they say, well, you know, when, when is it too late to plant? When is it too late to plant? And to me, to be honest with you, it's never too late to plant. Uh, you know, if I can get a few fruit off of that vegetable, off of that plant, it's not too late. I'm going to go ahead and, and get it planted. So uh, to me, that's what it's worth. You know, I'm not a com commercial farmer, commercial gardener per se. Um, I like a, a side income. Um, uh, from doing a lot of this, but uh, it's never too late to plant, so I'm always planting. Anyway, got the chipmunk, he's out here eating. And you know, and I used to be really, really upset when uh, I'd come out here and find the chipmunk or something's been preying on what I've been eating or what I want to eat. Uh, I think I had a tomato over here. The funny thing is, way over here, the chipmunk grabbed this tomato and ran way over here with it to eat it. Now the funny thing is I took a picture of this a little while ago and while I'm standing out here 30 feet away he came out and took a few more bites of it. It's pretty funny but those of you who know me from Facebook or wherever else you know that uh, I had a real rough time with the groundhogs and the rabbits and the chipmunks last year. This year's a bit different. You know I, I, I'll say that the hippie the hippie gardeners taught me a few things and, and, and they're right you know when you don't plant enough you're gonna be really worried anytime this stuff happens when you have more than enough in the ground or more than enough planted or ready to go in the ground you're not so worried you know uh, it's my faith that man is a, a steward of this planet and he's a steward of the animals on the planet so uh, in order for us to eat we need to make sure that they eat as well we need to understand at least that they're gonna to want to eat and uh, instead of trying to kill them in every approach, um, you know, maybe culling is a part of that, but uh, uh, needlessly killing them because we didn't plant enough, that's something totally different. No, a whole nother discussion. So anyway, I'm not so worried about this. I'm actually just going to leave that there. I'm going to let him go ahead and finish, which is <laughs> totally unfounded if you know me, but uh, I'm changing. I'm trying to get smarter, and I'm not... This old dog is learning new tricks. But anyway, on to the uh, uh, war on slugs, which it's a war. I'm not trying to kill them all. I just want to keep them out of my plants and let them go out there in the woods and eat some of those plants. But uh, what I've done here, what I recognize a few things, which is, man, these slugs, they love baby seedling pepper leaves and they love uh, stevia leaves. And so they've been pretty much leaving my tomatoes alone. They could care less about the tomatoes, but they're definitely, they've done their damage in my, uh, uh, on my seedlings with pepper. So what I basically did is I came out here to all the raised pallets, which did help. That, pre that slowed the slugs down. Um, one thing that helped an awful lot was this, uh, this, 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 this potting, potting shelf I, I put together. I used it in the winter for a, a, a rolling greenhouse, which I found no slugs on it, which was great. And the only reason I think that makes sense is the wheels, I uh, can't see it, it's basically suspended on two wheels. 
I'm sorry, four wheels, two on each side, and that just is probably just enough of a uh, presents enough of a problem for the slugs to to get a scent of the smell and get up there and find it. So it, it totally reduced the amount of slugs. So you know, I think you know, flat on the ground, you're gonna get a lot of slugs. But uh, uh, give some sort of pedestal, you know. Uh, uh, for the for whatever you're mounting it on to stand off the ground, you know, the, the the late the less surface space possible touching the ground, the less slugs you're gonna have. So anyway, very few up there, less on the pallets, the ones that were on the ground, you know, there were slugs everywhere. So anyway, so I've gone through here and I basically checked all my trays. This one I missed. Everything they're eating on, everything they like, I've already gone ahead and done my spot inspections and moved them over here. So basically what I'm doing is going through each tray, each pot of something they like to eat. And you can see they've been busy. Uh, but um, everything they like to eat, I pull over here. Oh, I missed one. And I try to make sure I get all of them. And one got away from me. And this is kind of like a quarantine zone where what I'm going to attempt to do. And, you know, if you're a super animal lover, turn your head. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I have to... Uh, I, I have to do some culling here and there. The slugs, uh, uh, anyway, uh, he's gone. And I, I'd like to do that as little as possible. I'd rather them go in the woods, but uh, I have to encourage them and cull them back sometimes because I've created an overpopulation of them because I've been obviously feeding the heck out of them. So, anyway. So I've been going through, pulling all the tomatoes, all the stevia, all the basil. That's the other one they love. They love basil as well. And I put them on my uh, mounted tray here. I'm not sure who I got the idea from. Someone on YouTube, which uh, made a whole lot of sense. Where basically, I've just got my pallet, four center blocks, and four trays. Fill the tray with water uh, or beer. And if, if you're doing beer, you're fine. This might be a little more expensive to, to keep it, uh, to, to upkeep it. Uh, water, is, it's a lot simpler. So I just put water in there and salt lots and lots of salt so they don't like salt water they'll stay out of the tray which means they'll stay off the pedestal which means they can't get up here on the pallet and eat my leaves so i mean really all i need is a couple more weeks to get all this stuff in the ground which might run me up to the middle of summer which it's okay i think it's what the third day or second day of summer today um i'm okay with that you know the bulk of what i wanted to plant is already in the ground it's already going i just got to um, do something about these guys so they don't uh, just get destroyed. Uh, MPH Gardener Bobby said something's real wise in one of his older videos. I think it had to do with uh, he was having trouble with some of his tomatoes and they were eating uh, something was eating the bottom of the leaves. And you know, his point was, you know, you, you do something. Don't just stand back when your your uh, your garden's coming under attack. You know, do something. You know, because if you don't do something, you're going to lose it. If you do something, eh, you might actually reduce what the damage they do or stop the damage they do so i'm doing something and so for the next few weeks this will be the uh, hiding area for the leaves they like to eat and the rest i'll just put out here on the pallets as i bring them from uh from the other yard over to here so anyway that's what i'm doing we'll see how this goes but just want to slow down the damage they do and if i can just slow them down and uh uh give some of these, these basil and stevia and peppers a break it'll be enough for these guys to come back and they'll be back in the ground before the slugs figured out what I did so anyway that's what I did best way to do it again inspect each one and you go over there pull the tray up pull the pot up look on all four sides turn it upside down look underneath you know look in these little holes they love hiding in the pots and sometimes they'll hide here in the sides of the pots so down here in the uh, between the soil and the uh, the plastic of the pot, they'll hide down there. I'm not looking in there. There's a little too much to do um, to do that. But you know, minimally, I'm making sure there's no major slug population going over to that platform. And as long as I can do that, it'll give me the break or them them the break that they need, so they can kind of recover a little bit, so I can get them in the ground. That's what I'm doing. That's my latest in the war on slugs. Have a good day.